Hey everyone, Rick here, and folks, have you heard of Necromolds? Now imagine it's 1991, you just finished your breakfast, Saturday morning cartoons, and an advertisement comes on in this crazy Technicolor battle game advertisement just absolutely hypnotizes you, and it uses clay, or Play-Doh, or whatever the case may be. Folks, this game is insane. I just watched a Dice Tower review of it last week, which brought it to my attention. They ran a Kickstarter a year or two ago. It's available. That's my favorite kind of Kickstarter, honestly, is when I see that it's... I don't even hear about it till it's over, and it's available, and I can go out and purchase it. Get to the website now. Uh, let's see, is there one on the back of the box? I'll have a link in the description so that you can look this up. Necromolds.com as well, because there are still bundles in the base game box, and we'll get into play and everything, but there are three spell books. We're going to be using this clay to mold these creatures, and we are going to battle it out across this very cool, very crazy looking game board. But that's, it's a miniature skirmish battle game where the miniatures are made out of clay. And the fantastic thing is this clay is eventually going to get dirty or, you know, get hard. You can use Play-Doh or any other kind of dough that you can find elsewhere. And I think they specifically made it so that because I think Play-Doh ones, the small ones, there's little three-ounce things. So yeah, just go get a three-ounce thing of Play-Doh, and then you can, you know, do different colors as well. You want to use the same color per player, though. So for example, in the starter set, it's recommended for two players. So you have someone's going to be making all their molds out of green clay, and the other one's going to be purple. These expansion sets each have two additional molds, aka spell books, in them. So there's going to be two additional monsters in each one of those and a different color clay as well. And I picked up this bundle, which has the base game, all four expansions. I also And uh, the bundle also came with two extra sets of command dice, so you could play this up to four players. It also came with this kind of cool little pin of the mascot there and what else oh yeah i also picked up this this is a this is the measuring tool in the game you just get punch out one so close range medium range and far range and you can use this like that but i got this kind of nicer pl flexi plastic one because it also has a little tip on the end here and a little kind of saw blade on the end here um multiple uses for this thing, but it kind of cleans up the mold lines, <laughs> literally, just like if you were making, if you were having miniatures, you were going to paint them, you wanted to file off the mold lines. When you pop your clay figures out of these spell books, they are going to have mold lines, flash lines that you can <laughs> even take. But that's not even the coolest part of the game is, and you're battling, look at these dice. Oh my gosh. How gorgeous are these? These are actually engraved, painted in the engraving die. So it's not just a sticker. It's not just a flat paint that's going to rub off. But that these are high-quality engraved dice. Those are the combat dice. Here are the command dice. And they are also very cool and engraved. Look at that. That's a magic icon, ranged attack icon, movement icon. And you got some of these. And we've all seen these. These acrylic gems in this kind of a hot pink purple color, which is very cool. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, these rings. Each player is going to have one of these because when a figure is defeated in combat, the opposing player, and we'll show this in real life too, smashes the figure and the resulting emblem <laughs> it's going to be in the pile of clay and you leave it there because now the smashed figure is a piece of hindering terrain folks if you have kids who love play-doh imagine now you can have this miniature skirmish battle game where they're smashing each other's figures i just think it's fantastic i don't have kids i have no intention of playing this with kids i am a full-grown adult male and i as soon as i saw this i was like i gotta have this give me everything available for this game all right so let's get right into it we got to mold some figures so the three figures that come the three spell books that come in the base game are these three so we have the insectomite we have the mud mumps and we have the grave ghoul each of which on the back has their stats so 
This is how much volume of clay they use. I don't know if that is necessarily, because you know, you okay, here's the other thing. When you're building your armies, you use all your clay. And so some figures like the insectomite are gonna use a lot of clay. Whereas these mud mumps, just a, and there's two in this mold are gonna use smaller amounts of clay. So instead of building an army out of points, you just build as many figures as you possibly can using the clay. And that's why it's important that each player has the exact same amount of clay so that your armies are going to be balanced based on the amount of clay. And there are these volume numbers. So I don't know if maybe you could use those as a point value kind of thing. Because they also say once the clay does start to get, you know, crusty, you can mold some of the figures for a final time and then let them dry out. And then if you wanted to paint them, you could. But anyway, let's take a look at some of these other stats here. So the claws are melee. That's how many attack dice in melee this thing's going to roll. How many attack dice in ranged attack it's going to roll. And how many defense dice it gets when it gets attacked, whether in melee or range. You'll notice one of these symbols is blue if it's within a close distance of a fellow figure that also has a blue skill of the same then it gets to roll one extra die when using that skill um, and then it also has a special ability here so when tied in combat insectomite does not smash that means normally when you tie the defender is smashed in melee combat in ranged combat, the defender also lives, but in melee, the defender would get smashed if they tie. Not insectomite, though. When insectomite gets tied, it is not smashed. And then it has these options along the bottom here. This is where you assign your command dice. So for your turn, if you're rolling four command dice, here are my options. Stars are wild. Uh, I don't have, if I was just using these two, I don't have any with a magic symbol on it. The Grave Ghoul does, though. So if you put a magic symbol, let's say we use this wild as a magic symbol, it now bumps up if you decide to do a range attack with it from a close range to a far range. So you might want to do something like this. And now we have a far ranged attack for our Grave Ghoul. And if we wanted to go crazy with the Grave Ghoul, we could put assign the movement there, too. So it could move a medium distance and then shoot a far distance and that's with all the grave ghouls you have because you can mold multiple of you know each figure so when you assign dice to a spell book that figure all of those figures on your side of the battlefield get to activate in any order and you resolve the con these things in any order as well so actually if i wanted to shoot first Take that die off there and shoot. And then if I wanted to move maybe back, then I could resolve the movement die. So, oh my gosh, it's just so freaking awesome. Let's do some molding. Um, we'll just say we're green. Oh my gosh, folks, this clay smells so good. It has that kind of salty. <laughs> I Oh my gosh, I want to eat it. No, don't eat the clay. Okay, so let's just grab some. It, obviously, this is my first time, so I'm still kind of eyeballing how much I think we're going to need for this. This is probably way too much. Put it in a ball, open up the spell book, stick it right in the middle, and then I've seen other videos of it. They say let the mold do the work. So you can see it start to get squished down there. And hopefully it'll fill in the bottom part because that's the most important part. That's where it's actually going to be standing. It's all going to squish out of there. And then when we open it back up, here we go. Here is our grave ghoul. This is the back of them. But let's go ahead and peel this off. And it peels off, especially when this clay is still so fresh. It peels off so easily. And these spell books are easily able to be cleaned too because, I don't know if you saw when I was opening the book, one of the halves almost kind of wanted to come out there because these are removable. Pretty simple to remove them. There's just a couple pegs and holes. So if any clay kind of got back in here or whatever, you wanted to wipe this out or rinse this out, you absolutely could pop it back in there. But here it is. Let's see if we can get it out. Because again, this clay is super soft. So we don't, we want to be kind of careful when we're removing it. But at one point, you just got to pull it out of there. So here we go. We pulled it out of here and here it is. Here is the grave ghoul. Look at this. It's just like a standing coffin swirled in a mystic aura with the skull there. Let's see what the actual art looks like on this thing. Oops, I dropped him. Here is the grave ghoul itself. So it's like this coffin with like 
Oh, it's so freaking cool. But here it is. And it has, because obviously when you're molding it, it forms the base. So it has this base that it's going to stand on. And they stand pretty well. Look at that. So now this is a figure on the battlefield. And when I'm moving him, how far do they move? So they would move a medium distance. So when I'm moving him, I use this movement tool. And I would move, you know, from here to here. That was a move, a medium movement. But as you can see, see kind of the mold lines or the flash lines along the side. So if you wanted to get really like particular about it, obviously you could probably just pat them down. But if you wanted to scrape off just that little bit there, oh, sorry, it's kind of blurry on the bottom because every little bit of clay actually does matter. <laughs> I don't know if scraping your mold lines would earn you enough clay to make, you know, maybe one more mud mump or something like that. Also, since, uh, you know, both players may want grave ghouls so who would have the spell book on their side of the battlefield no problem they give you all of these very thick nice cardboard punch out things so now we can each player can have a grave ghoul card on their side of the battlefield to assign the combat dice to and resolve them but it's super simple tactical skirmish miniatures battle game all this terrain i didn't even talk about this so it's just punch out standy terrain. Anytime there's a window or something there, line of sight can go through there, any of these holes. Typically, you'll have about three pieces of terrain out on the battlefield at any given time. But just look at this. Imagine this whole side of green figures, this whole side of purple figures, moving them, shooting them. But then the most fun part of all is if that grave ghoul, well, let's take a look let's see what are the grave ghoul stats let's say something was attacking it with four dice so on these dice there are gem symbols there are shield symbols and there are hit symbols every time you roll a gem symbol you get a gem these gems can be used to add extra combat dice so for example the grave ghoul rolls three dice when it attacks in melee or range in order to add another die to either of those, you need to use enough gems to equal the amount of the new combat dice pool. So if I normally roll three dice, but now I want to roll four dice, I have to spend four gems in order to do that. And then if I spend four gems, then I can add another die to my die pool. But let's say Grave Ghoul is the one being attacked, and this was the attack roll, so the attacker just got themselves a gem. But good God, look at all these attacks. That's seven worth of attack. Grave Ghoul in defense only rolls two defense dice. I don't even think there's a possibility for them to survive this. They may want to spend some gems. Let's say they spent... I don't know, three gems. So now they can add a third die to their die pool. Let's see if we can get enough shields to block that. Well, it was a valiant effort, but we only rolled four shields, which means the attack got through and Grave Ghoul is going to be smashed. So the opposing person goes... Just like that. Oh my gosh. And now we leave that there. This is now a piece of hindering terrain. Opposing figures and, you know, just figures in general cannot end their movement on a smashed figure. So they'd have to move over, move around, or whatever the case may be. So it does impact movement on the battlefield. But as you can see, now there's the emblem of the Spider Lord who was the opposing general. Oh my gosh. Our grave ghoul just got smashed. Folks, this is so freaking freaking awesome but that's just a two-player game imagine a player on every side for because that's why they give you in this bundle pack extra command dice so every player can have those and and then just the variety of the spell books so three come in the base game and then there's two more in each of these expansion packs so there are all kinds of cool things there's a fungix and look at that guy and there is a petropod oh my gosh that's so freaking awesome this one comes with orange clay this one comes with is that pink clay i think orange pink of course we got green and purple we have looks like red and I assume this will be blue. Kind of a bluish teal. Oh my gosh, that's so freaking cool. Got your terrain on the board. Anyway, I could go on and on about this. This is so freaking awesome. It absolutely exceeds all my expectations. I just love the concept and how simple and fast the gameplay is. So folks, that is Necromolds. Check it out. Link in the description. And thank you all so much for watching. And until next time.